when everybody starts scrambling about vaccines, one thing that we notice is that we quickly realize that Africa is in a bad situation. And currently, if you take all the vaccine pre-COVID COVID that you use to vaccinate the kids against uh, yellow fever and, um, and, and other diseases, only less than 1% is produced in Africa. So pre-COVID, I want to restress this, only less than 1% of all the vaccine consumed in Africa are made in Africa. All the rest are just exported from elsewhere. And then or specifically on COVID-19, um, what is the percentage of um, vaccines that are produced in Africa? And what are those vaccines, if you can none, name them? None are currently produced uh, in Africa. There has been some deals ongoing with some companies um, across the region, especially in South Africa, to uh, produce some vaccines. But as we are speaking as today, none of those vaccines being um, developed are produced in Africa. There are countries in Africa with high hesitancy in taking the COVID-19 vaccination compared to other diseases such as Ebola and malaria, um, and they have turned to alternative medicine to fight the disease. What does this mean, um, and what is your take on it? Are manufacturers giving up on those countries, or are they working to eliminate the hesitancy level? I think the key is education, right, to be able to understand um, um, how effective this vaccine is. Um, use data to be able to prove that. Um, there are some countries that we can look at today where you can see that as the vaccination increases, you can see a decrease in, in the cases. So if we have some of those data that we can use to show the health authorities on even the citizen of those countries that the vaccine is working, I think it may help to reduce the hesitancy. It's not just in Africa, you've seen that globally, um, even in the West. So uh, health authorities and global health organization need to continue to advocate for vaccination so that we can beat this pandemic. Dr. Tosa, you're offering a few recommendations uh, for Africa to boost its um, capability to manufacture vaccines. Can you elaborate on those? The question is how can we prepare Africa and low and medium countries to be ready for the next pandemics to be able to produce their own vaccines. Because of the current landscape, the current ecosystem of the vaccine manufacturing in Africa is to start by what we call last mile manufacturing. What we mean by last mile manufacturing is to focus on the fin, fill, finish, and packaging of vaccines. Vaccine manufacturing is very complex. You know, you need to start by um, the, the antigen production formulate the antigen, and then conduct the field finish and packaging. To be successful, it is our opinion that we have to take a look at them holistically. The first one is the technical readiness. There's a lack of technical readiness currently on the continent. And when you look at the white paper, you can see some of the steps that we, um, uh, we outline in that. The, third, the second area is um, the regulatory strengthening. You don't want to manufacture a um, vaccine in a weak regulatory environment. You want to be able to strengthen the regulatory and to take it another step further because of the fragmentation of the African market. We believe that it will be more profitable to harmonize um, the regulatory agencies or guidelines, at least at a regional level so that a manufacturer in a country can be able to um, sell without trying to um, comply to multiple guidances at the same time. And lastly, we, we, we have to work on policy and access to market. You see, in our exercise looking at this um, vaccine manufacturing in Africa, we have discovered that in the past there have been some manufacturers before um, in the 60s and, and 80s, but most of those manufacturers disappeared because they were not sustainable. If we take all those three areas together and we work on them simultaneously, I think we can be able to um, get into a situation where we can increase the production of vaccine in Africa and not only that, make it sustainable and prepare Africa for the next pandemic. Uh, Dr. Tosser, uh, why do you think Africa is not ready? 
uh, whether it be through infrastructure and through any other systems, why isn't Africa ready? Um, you have the finances that has been a hurdle, but most importantly, um, vaccine manufacturing is very complex. We don't know, we don't have all the know-how, we don't have all um, the, um, the skills locally to be able to um, manufacture vaccines. And when you don't have that, the, the implication is that you have to hire people from expatriate to come in and that is more expensive. So we have to encourage more training. We, we, we discussed that in our white paper as well. Um, one of the key um, tools that we can use to address that, for instance, is partnership. We have to strengthen partnership with some companies in the West to foster more technology transfer towards Africa. When it comes to the political will, I think we are in an environment where you can sense that there is a movement. There is a will that is there. For instance, you have a recent uh, summit organized by CDC Africa that convened um, some head of states. And I took part in that and you can see that they sense the urgency. What we are saying here at USP is we believe that this crisis cannot be wasted. Right. It is a moment that we have to take advantage of, gather all the necessary energy, the momentum necessary, uh, work with um, the official, the policy makers, the regulatory agencies, the manufacturers, the finances, so that we can take advantage of this crisis to be able to move the world forward so that this status quo can change in Africa.